Adsorption is the adhesion of atoms, ions, or molecules from a gas, liquid, or dissolved solid to a surface. This process creates a film of the adsorbate on the surface of the adsorbent. This process differs from absorption, in which a fluid permeates or is dissolved by a liquid or solid. Adsorption is a surface-based process while absorption involves the whole volume of the material. The term sorption encompasses both processes, while desorption is the reverse of it. Adsorption is a surface phenomenon. IUPAC definition increase in the concentration of a substance at the interface of a condensed and a liquid or gaseous layer owing to the operation of surface forces. Note 1. Adsorption of proteins is of great importance when a material is in contact with blood or body fluids. In the case of blood, albumin, which is largely predominant, is generally adsorbed first, and then rearrangements occur in favor of other minor proteins according to surface affinity against mass law selection. Note 2. Adsorbed molecules are those that are resistant to washing with the same solvent medium in the case of adsorption from solutions. The washing conditions can thus modify the measurement results, particularly when the interaction energy is low. Similar to surface tension, adsorption is a consequence of surface energy. In a bulk material, all the bonding requirements of the constituent atoms of the material are filled by other atoms in the material. However, atoms on the surface of the adsorbent are not wholly surrounded by other adsorbent atoms and therefore can attract adsorbates. The exact nature of the bonding depends on the details of the species involved, but the adsorption process is generally classified as physisorption or chemisorption. It may also occur due to electrostatic attraction. Adsorption is present in many natural, physical, biological, and chemical systems, and is widely used in industrial applications such as activated shakehole, capturing and using waste heat to provide cold water for air conditioning and other process requirements, synthetic resins, increased storage capacity of carbide-derived carbons, and water purification. Adsorption, ion exchange, and chromatography adsorption processes in which certain adsorbates are selectively transferred from the fluid phase to the surface of insoluble, rigid particles suspended in a vessel or packed in a column. Pharmaceutical industry applications, which use adsorption as a means to prolong neurological exposure to specific drugs or parts thereof, are lesser known. However, it should be remarked that the distinction between adsorption and absorption vanishes as we go from perfectly crystalline macroscopic materials to porous, structured materials, aggregates and composites made out of increasingly smaller grains, viz. micron-sized particles to nanoparticles, sub-nanoparticles and finally molecules. In such nanocomposites, the internal surface area of particulate matter is very large. Then the adsorption on internal surfaces simply becomes absorption when viewed from the bulk. Then the distinction between adsorption and absorption vanishes. On the other hand, the distinction is clearest between bulk solids without internal structure, but having only surfaces where only adsorption can occur on the outer surfaces, and nanocomposites or aggregates with internal structure where absorption by the host material is simply adsorption on internal surfaces of the host material. As an example, we may consider a crystalline piece of silicon dioxide which can adsorb water molecules on its surface. However, if the quartz is ground into very fine sand, the pile of sand has a very large internal surface area. A very large amount of water can be adsorbed by the internal surfaces of the grains in the pile of sand. And this absorption is simply internal adsorption. If water is made to flow through such a pile of sand, ions and toxins in the water may be preferentially adsorbed by the surfaces of the grains of sand, providing a simple, well-known water purification application. The word adsorption was coined in 1881 by German physicist Heinrich Heiser. Isotherms Adsorption is usually described through isotherms, that is, the amount of adsorbate on the adsorbent as a function of its pressure or concentration at constant temperature. 
The quantity adsorbed is nearly always normalized by the mass of the adsorbent to allow comparison of different materials. To date, 15 different isotherm models were developed. Linear Freundlich The first mathematical fit to an isotherm was published by Freundlich and Custer and is a purely empirical formula for gaseous adsorbates. Whereas the quantity of adsorbate adsorbed in moles is the mass of the adsorbent, is the pressure of adsorbate and inner empirical constants for each adsorbent adsorbate pair at a given temperature. The function is not adequate at very high pressure because in reality has an asymptotic maximum as pressure increases without bound. As the temperature increases, the constants and change to reflect the empirical observation that the quantity adsorbed rises more slowly and higher pressures are required to saturate the surface. Langmuir Irving Langmuir was the first to derive a scientifically based adsorption isotherm in 1918. The model applies to gases adsorbed on solid surfaces. It is a semi-empirical isotherm with a kinetic basis and was derived based on statistical thermodynamics. It is the most common isotherm equation to use due to its simplicity and its ability to fit a variety of adsorption data. It is based on four assumptions. All of the adsorption sites are equivalent and each site can only accommodate one molecule. The surface is energetically homogeneous and adsorbed molecules do not interact. There are no phase transitions. At the maximum adsorption, only a monolayer is formed. Adsorption only occurs on localized sites on the surface, not with other adsorbates. These four assumptions are seldom all true. There are always imperfections on the surface, adsorbed molecules are not necessarily inert, and the mechanism is clearly not the same for the very first molecules to adsorb to a surface as for the last. The fourth condition is the most troublesome, as frequently more molecules will adsorb to the monolayer. This problem is addressed by the BET isotherm for relatively flat surfaces. The Langmuir isotherm is nonetheless the first choice for most models of adsorption, and has many applications in surface kinetics and thermodynamics. Langmuir suggested that adsorption takes place through this mechanism, where A is a gas molecule and S is an adsorption site. The direct and inverse rate constants are K and K-1. If we define surface coverage as the fraction of the adsorption sites occupied in the equilibrium we have, or where is the partial pressure of the gas or the molar concentration of the solution, for very low pressures and for high pressures is difficult to measure experimentally. Usually, if we call V mon the STP volume of adsorbate required to form a monolayer on the adsorbent, and we obtain an expression for a straight line, through its slope and y-intercept we can obtain V mon and K, which are constants for each adsorbent adsorbate pair at a given temperature. V mon is related to the number of adsorption sites through the ideal gas law. If we assume that the number of sites is just the whole area of the solid divided into the cross-section of the adsorbate molecules, we can easily calculate the surface area of the adsorbent. The surface area of an adsorbent depends on its structure, the more pores it has, the greater the area, which has a big influence on reactions on surfaces. If more than one gas adsorbs on the surface, we define as the fraction of empty sites and we have. Also, we can define as the fraction of the sites occupied by the JTH gas, where I is each one of the gases that adsorb. But often molecules do form multilayers, that is, some are adsorbed on already adsorbed molecules and the Langmuir isotherm is not valid. In 1938 Stephen Brunauer, Paul Emmett, and Edward Teller developed a model isotherm that takes that possibility into account. Their theory is called BET theory, after the initials in their last names. They modified Langmuir's mechanism as follows. A plus S is A plus is A2 S A plus A2 S A3 S and so on. The derivation of the formula is more complicated than Langmuir's. We obtain X is the pressure divided by the vapor pressure for the adsorbate at that temperature. V is the STP volume of adsorbed adsorbate. 
V mon is the STP volume of the amount of adsorbate required to form a monolayer and C is the equilibrium constant K we use in Langmuir isotherm, multiplied by the vapor pressure of the adsorbate. The key assumption used in deriving the BET equation that the successive heats of adsorption for all layers except the first are equal to the heat of condensation of the adsorbate. The Langmuir isotherm is usually better for chemisorption and the BET isotherm works better for physisorption for non-microporous surfaces. Kijliuk in other instances, molecular interactions between gas molecules previously adsorbed on a solid surface form significant interactions with gas molecules in the gaseous phases. Hence, adsorption of gas molecules to the surface is more likely to occur around gas molecules that are already present on the solid surface, rendering the Langmuir adsorption isotherm ineffective for the purposes of modeling. This effect was studied in a system where nitrogen was the adsorbate and tungsten was the adsorbent by Paul Kijliuk in 1957. To compensate for the increased probability of adsorption occurring around molecules present on the substrate surface, Kijliuk developed the precursor state theory, whereby molecules would enter a precursor state at the interface between the solid adsorbent and adsorbate in the gaseous phase. From here, adsorbate molecules would either adsorb to the adsorbent or desorb into the gaseous phase. The probability of adsorption occurring from the precursor state is dependent on the adsorbate's proximity to other adsorbate molecules that have already been adsorbed. If the adsorbate molecule in the precursor state is in close proximity to an adsorbate molecule that has already formed on the surface, it has a sticking probability reflected by the size of the Shea constant and will either be adsorbed from the precursor state at a rate of KEC or will desorb into the gaseous phase at a rate of KES. If an adsorbate molecule enters the precursor state at a location that is remote from any other previously adsorbed adsorbate molecules, the sticking probability is reflected by the size of the SD constant. These factors were included as part of a single constant termed of sticking coefficient, Ke, described below, as SD is dictated by factors that are taken into account by the Langmuir model. SD can be assumed to be the adsorption rate constant. However, the rate constant for the Kijliuk model is different from that of the Langmuir model, as R is used to represent the impact of diffusion on monolayer formation and is proportional to the square root of the system's diffusion coefficient. The Kijliuk adsorption isotherm is written as follows, where theta is fractional coverage of the adsorbent with adsorbate, and T is immersion time. Solving for theta yields. Adsorption enthalpy adsorption constants are equilibrium constants, therefore they obey the van t Hoff equation. As can be seen in the formula, the variation of k must be isosteric, that is, a constant coverage. If we start from the BET isotherm and assume that the entropy change is the same for liquefaction and adsorption we obtain that is to say, adsorption is more exothermic than liquefaction. Adsorbents Characteristics and general requirements Adsorbents are used usually in the form of spherical pellets, rods, moldings, or monoliths with a hydrodynamic radius between 0.25 and 5 mm. They must have high abrasion resistance, high thermal stability and small pore diameters, which results in higher exposed surface area and hence high capacity for adsorption. The adsorbents must also have a distinct pore structure that enables fast transport of the gaseous vapors. Most industrial adsorbents fall into one of three classes. Oxygen-containing compounds are typically hydrophilic and polar, including materials such as silica gel and zeolites. Carbon-based compounds are typically hydrophobic and nonpolar, including materials such as activated carbon and graphite. Polymer-based compounds are polar or nonpolar functional groups in a porous polymer matrix, 
Silica gel Silica gel is a chemically inert, non-toxic, polar and dimensionally stable amorphous form of CO2. It is prepared by the reaction between sodium silicate and acetic acid, which is followed by a series of after-treatment processes such as aging, pickling, etc. These after-treatment methods result in various pore size distributions. Silica is used for drying of process air and adsorption of heavy hydrocarbons from natural gas. Zeolites Zeolites are natural or synthetic crystalline alumina silicates, which have a repeating pore network and release water at high temperature. Zeolites are polar in nature. They are manufactured by hydrothermal synthesis of sodium alumina silicate or another silica source in an autoclave followed by ion exchange with certain cations. The channel diameter of zeolite cages usually ranges from 2 to 9 A. The ion exchange process is followed by drying of the crystals, which can be pelletized with a binder to form macroporous pellets. Zeolites are applied in drying of process air, CO2 removal from natural gas, CO removal from reforming gas, air separation, catalytic cracking, in catalytic synthesis and reforming. Non-polar zeolites are synthesized from aluminum-free silica sources or by delumination of aluminum-containing zeolites. The delumination process is done by treating the zeolite with steam at elevated temperatures, typically greater than 500 degrees Celsius. This high temperature heat treatment breaks the aluminum oxygen bonds and the aluminum atom is expelled from the zeolite framework. Activated carbon Activated carbon is a highly porous, amorphous solid consisting of microcrystallites with a graphite lattice usually prepared in small pellets or a powder. It is non-polar and cheap. One of its main drawbacks is that it reacts with oxygen at moderate temperatures. Activated carbon can be manufactured from carbonaceous material, including coal, peat, wood, or nutshells. The manufacturing process consists of two phases, carbonization and activation. The carbonization process includes drying and then heating to separate byproducts, including tars and other hydrocarbons from the raw material, as well as to drive off any gases generated. The process is completed by heating the material over 400 degrees Celsius in an oxygen-free atmosphere that cannot support combustion. The carbonized particles are then activated by exposing them to an oxidizing agent, usually steam or carbon dioxide at high temperature. This agent burns off the pore blocking structures created during the carbonization phase and so, they develop a porous three-dimensional graphite lattice structure. The size of the pores developed during activation is the function of the time that they spend in this stage. Longer exposure times result in larger pore sizes. The most popular aqueous phase carbons are bituminous based because of their hardness, abrasion resistance, pore size distribution, and low cost but their effectiveness needs to be tested in each application to determine the optimal product. Activated carbon is used for adsorption of organic substances and non-polar adsorbates and it is also usually used for waste gas treatment. It is the most widely used adsorbent since most of its chemical and physical properties can be tuned according to what is needed. Its usefulness also derives from its large micropore volume and the resulting high surface area. Protein adsorption of biomaterials Protein adsorption is a process that has a fundamental role in the field of biomaterials. Indeed, biomaterial surfaces in contact with biological media, such as blood or serum, are immediately coated by proteins. Therefore, living cells do not interact directly with the biomaterial surface but with the adsorbed proteins layer. This protein layer mediates the interaction between biomaterials and cells. Translating biomaterial physical and chemical properties into a biological language. In fact, cell membrane receptors bind to protein layer bioactive sites and these receptor protein binding events are transduced 
through the cell membrane in a manner that stimulates specific intracellular processes that then determine cell adhesion, shape, growth and differentiation. Protein adsorption is influenced by many surface properties such as surface wettability, surface chemical composition and surface nanometer scale morphology. Adsorption chillers Combining an adsorbent with a refrigerant, adsorption chillers use heat to provide a cooling effect. This heat, in the form of hot water, may come from any number of industrial sources including waste heat from industrial processes, prime heat from solar thermal installations or from the exhaust or water jacket heat of a piston engine or turbine. Although there are similarities between absorption and adsorption refrigeration, the latter is based on the interaction between gases and solids. The adsorption chamber of the chiller is filled with a solid material, which in its neutral state has adsorbed the refrigerant. When heated, the solid absorbs refrigerant vapor, which subsequently is cooled and liquefied. This liquid refrigerant then provides its cooling effect at the evaporator by absorbing external heat and turning back into a vapor. In the final stage the refrigerant vapor is adsorbed into the solid. As an adsorption chiller requires no moving parts, it is relatively quiet.